Hey, what is up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So yeah, it's here, the M3 MacBook Air, a couple of days later than the initial reviews, but I'm not on Apple's embargo list. So I have to buy this thing with my own money and wait for it to be delivered like everybody else. I went for the Starlight colorway this time, you know, switch things up a little bit. I do love the midnight color on the M2, but the fingerprints just drove me crazy. Now these M3 models do have Apple's new coating on them, which does mitigate that to some extent, at least it does on my Space Black M3 MacBook Pro, but even then you will see much less smudging and fingerprints on a brighter color like Starlight. Anyway, I really wanted to get my hands on this thing for you guys, specifically the base model, because last year I made a case for the base model M2 MacBook Air and that really seemed to resonate with you guys. I was getting a little frustrated with all the hate it was getting because of all the ridiculous benchmark tests people were throwing at it and I may have gotten a little bit too excited. Oh my God, the machine slows down when you run multiple streams of 8K. No shit, people need to relax. Anyway, I'll try to keep my cool this time, but I stand by what I said. The base model M2 MacBook Air held up very, very well, and it's now Patty's main computer. She uses it when she's working from home, and she hasn't run into a single issue either. I think the reason why it was getting so much flack is that people were approaching it completely wrong. I don't need my MacBook Air to handle heavy 4K or 8K video editing timelines, and I'm fairly confident that those of you who use programs like Blender, those who are looking to create 3D models, aren't looking at the MacBook Air as their weapon of choice. I already have a spec'd out M3 MacBook Pro that can do all the heavy lifting. The MacBook Pro is the machine I use for video editing, it's what I use to produce a bit of music, it's what I use to run my daytime business, and it's what I use for, well, all the professional stuff that requires a lot of horsepower. There's a reason why that machine is called Pro and this machine is called Air. It's a much lighter machine with a much smaller footprint that is much easier to take with you on a commute or a trip and that is built to handle light tasks. Airy tasks, if you will. It's the perfect computer for students, it's a great office machine, and it's a fantastic option if you travel a lot and you'd like to be able to do some work on the road without having to lug around a heavy MacBook Pro. Speaking of travel, a quick word of thank you to today's sponsor, Kushu. They were responsible for creating my number one favorite tech travel accessory of last year, and I'm afraid they just went ahead and made it a little bit better. If you're a regular to the channel, I'm sure you've seen me talk about their foldable three-in-one travel charger in at least one video. It's such a useful device, it even made it into my best tech of 2023 video. They just dropped a new version with a round design and I absolutely love it. These things are great to set up next to your MacBook to use your phone as a companion device while charging all of my stuff, my phone, my AirPods, and even my Apple Watch. And because the Apple Watch charger delivers five watts instead of three, it will give my Apple Watch Ultra a quick charge, which most other third-party chargers cannot do. When you're done using it, you can fold it down with a satisfying smash and keep it in this nice hard case here that comes with it or just toss it in your tech pouch like I do. Such a simple thing, but definitely worth it. If you wanna snag one for yourself, there's a link in the description. Now, I do realize that not everybody's a tech YouTuber or a business person, and we don't all have several computers to choose from. MacBooks are expensive, no matter what model you're looking at. And if you're having to pick one machine that needs to cover all of your needs, you're gonna wanna know what it's capable of. And here, we should have some good news right out of the box, because Apple did make some useful improvements to the M3 MacBook Air. The RAM and storage on the base model did stay the same at eight gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gigs of storage, but Apple did announce that the speeds should have improved over the M2, even on the base configuration. Of course, the proof is in the pudding and I will be testing all of that out for you. By the way, if you wanna be sure to catch my full review, a sub to the channel would be much appreciated. Wi-Fi has also improved. The new M3 MacBook Air models now come with Wi-Fi 6E instead of Wi-Fi 6. Not everybody will have access to a Wi-Fi 6E router, but even on an older router, you should be able to notice improvements both in speed and range. The M3 MacBook Air also comes with considerably better CPU performance, both single core and multi-core. Most obviously, of course, there is the M3 chip, which is Apple's first three nanometer chip and the most efficient chip to date. This will, of course, impact overall performance, but it should also make an already impressive battery life on the previous models even better. 
Apple played it safe by still quoting the regular 18 hours of battery life, but the new more efficient chip means we should be able to do more demanding tasks within that 18 hour window, aside from just light web browsing. Something that's not mentioned a lot but deserves some attention is that the MacBook Air can now drive two external monitors instead of just one. I know some of you were bummed out that the M2 can only drive one monitor, so that should be a really welcome upgrade for those of you who like to rock a double screen setup. All in all, a lot to look forward to. Now in my full review, you won't be finding any benchmark tests, nor will you see me trying to run my Final Cut Pro video editing timelines on this machine. What I will be doing is using this machine on a day-to-day -day basis for the tasks it's intended to do and give you my honest thoughts on that. If there are any pitfalls or things you should be aware of, I'll let you know, but if it works, it works, and I'll share that with you as well. My goal for these reviews is to create a realistic picture that can help you make better decisions, hopefully answering all of your questions along the way, but if you want me to look at anything specific, please don't hesitate to reach out to me on Instagram. I'm always happy to talk to you guys, so shoot me a message, even if it's just about the weather. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this little unboxing and first impressions video. If you did, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned for some links to videos you might also want to watch.